I wanted people to hear if they didn't know you had a little bit of like a cancel story. Like, can you explain how you kind of went from an SJW more identifying yeah. comic to yeah, whatever yeah. this is today? <laughs> I, I also a normal comic, a normal, healthy person who can see both sides. Um, yeah. Quickly, uh, before we move on, Pat Mahoney is very upset. We haven't got to his super chat yet. So um, let's get the Pat. Here we go. Um, from Pat, fight Aaron Berg at Skankfest. I will coach Aaron for free. Are you going to Skankfest, uh, Jamie? You you can absolutely coach Aaron. Uh, Aaron's one of like my Aaron's a close friend of mine. <laughs> I love Aaron. Um, although if I I like the idea because he I believe has a gun in his profile picture, Pat. Um, I like the idea of him coaching Aaron for free, but his coaching has nothing to do with mixed martial arts, and he just sits there with the gun ominously threatening just me until I get yeah. out. I'm like, I give up, dude. I don't fucking want to deal with that. No, I love Aaron. Uh, I think I, I think the last time I did Aaron's show, I said, uh, yeah, I, I maybe said I was going to fight him. <laughs> but yeah, Aaron, Aaron and Gino. And this is what you said, too. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm the I, I am at the point where I just want to be around nice, funny people. And a lot of the nice, funny people I am around are far uh they're more conservative than me and i i don't i don't care anymore even were you, like I, were you I burned feel, by someone in, like were, like oh i mean well so i had this affair and i was everybody like literally everybody and i man i've told this story a bunch like i've told it on birds i told it on rogan's um i can give like the elevator pitch i'm trying to figure out something new i can tell you to make it interesting to add to my fucking 10 year old trauma but essentially the fact that the worst thing I had was an affair and consensual one night stands and we're still talking about it 10 years later and it's still stopping me from getting work sort of shows how big, I have an old, big it should be. I have an old stupid thing that's keeping me from getting work that I can tell really? you done. So don't feel bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the it's fucking it's wild. And what, you know, when I did Stan Hope's podcast, I kind of was like, I think people who were mad at me, it wasn't really about sex stuff. It was more about that I was a pretentious douchebag. In... Wait, you had an affair with who? With like, what was what was the big deal? Lots oh, of people it, have affairs. It, it, it was in like the most fucking cliche, like fucking the secretary type thing. It was just like the marriage was falling apart. Your and... marriage or their marriage? Mine, mine. Okay. And, you know, stuff I can't talk about happened. And then... You know, this girl fucking started hitting me up on Twitter and was like, I should like do stuff for the show. And I was like, OK. And I'm so, at this point, I just didn't even think I was like an attractive. Uh, I imagine this is a comedy person who hit you. No, up. no, no, no. It wasn't a comedy. Oh. Person. It was just like a fucking fan. OK. And uh, and then she was like, I should start coming on the road with you. And I was like, this is <laughs> great. And oh, like your drink. Uh, yeah. And I started like, you know, and I like booked separate hotel rooms and shit. And then um. Uh, one night, like, uh, were they conjo conjoined? Were they, were they <laughs> conjoined <laughs> rooms? Like, with the like, they're they're separate, but there's a little door like, that goes in there. A, a sexy little curtain separates the room. Um, yeah, and then you know, the fucking had this thing, and it lasted for two fucking years, and who, it lasted. Who cares? E why ever why since she? Because I was a self righteous feminist dude, so it, it wasn't. What I was accused of, even using the word accused, I fucking hate, is nothing that comics haven't talked about on stage. Having affairs, having one night stands. One girl in the Jezebel article, there was a Jezebel article written. Uh, wow. One That's girl, you've made it. Yep. One girl <laughs> said, um, she said uh, it was the safest I ever felt with the man or like it was the nicest someone ever, like something, something along the lines of I treated her very well because I'm not a fucking dirtbag with women. So this person wrote a Jezebel article about you. The affair person. So, so we have the affair, we break up and then, um, you know, she says stuff like one day I'm gonna write a book about this. And I'm like, I'm not that famous. And this is like <laughs> pre cancellations. Uh, and, then me and my ex-wife to try to like fix our relationship were like right, we can try an open relationship and we announced it on the podcast 
and once we're we now annou- taking applications our yeah, dms I mean, pretty, are open well the fucking reason i so we didn't announce it at first because it was a really unhealthy way to do an open relationship which is it was like a don't ask don't tell thing and the problem was i the, pretty much just meant i could fuck on the road right and I still felt like I was having an affair. Like one of the reasons I was so depressed is I hated having the fucking affair. It wasn't fun. It was terrible. I felt like a total fucking piece of shit. I still feel like a piece of shit. And, and I know like tons of people have affairs and tons of people have affairs for the same fucking reason I had an affair. And like all of my fucking girlfriends in my life, like girls I've actually dated and friends are like, bro, this was an affair 10 years ago. You have to let this go and stop Mm. carrying around that fucking shame. But like, yeah, I shouldn't have done it. Um, but, after the affair ended, when we tried the open relationship, because it was don't ask, don't tell, I still felt like I was cheating because I was going yeah. around and like getting girls numbers and not telling my wife. And like, even though I was like allowed to, it still felt it felt like you were living a lie. Yeah. And also like, it's not the easiest to like get pussy when you meet someone and they're like, are you in a relationship? And you're like, I'm in well, a secret open relationship. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It sounds like bullshit. And because so to most said, single ladies, you hear that and you go, ugh, I don't yeah, want to. That sounds complicated. That's a fucking red flag. Sounds yeah, like I'm going to well, have a broken bottle over my head in a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, when we announced, so I go, we got to say something on the show, dude. Like, I feel like a creep. We said something on the show. And then the next day, I don't know what, if it was jealousy. I don't know if it was a coincidence, whatever. The next day, the girl I had an affair with came back, posted on some feminist Facebook group who here has been wronged by supposed the feminist Jamie Kilstein Good out man. of the like hundreds of people I've slept with. That was a name drop. Uh, that was a bunch of name drops. The one girl said he DM me on Twitter and was flirting. I told him I had a boyfriend. He said, I'm sorry. That was it. No dicks were sent. This no, whatever. So, so pathetic. Oh and my then God. we'll listen to this. The, this one's the worst. And by the way, this is me just saying the stuff that like I can say, like the full story that like my friends and girlfriends get you know, is even more insane. But in the Jezebel article, yeah, this one girl that we hooked up, we didn't even sleep together. We hooked up and uh, she said it was the safest I ever felt with a man. But then she said, um, but weeks later, he called me a road fuck on his podcast. (laughs) And then I swear to God, Jezebel in parentheses in the article that torpedoed my life said Jezebel could not find this quote. And the reason, Chrissy, that Jezebel cannot find this quote is I'm not talking about slaying road pussy on my fucking feminist podcast with my wife. But even if I did say that, that is not emotional abuse, which is what it's called. That's being a dick, right? That's being a comic. Um, And I didn't say that just to add to it. So the problem is when you Google me when I want to be canceled. And by the way, it's never women who try to get me canceled it's usually fucking creepy ass guys who send this old stuff who hated me back from the day when they thought i was like enemies comics or, no 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 not comics just fucking regular, just like just regular dudes just dirtbag losers who yeah who are on like you know whatever um and the the headline isn't former feminist has a fair it's sexual misconduct predatory behavior and emotional abuse for which is, those things. which is like in your defense very easy to slap those labels on a dude you know it's crazy well and you know the and i'm sure you will agree with this but the people who have emailed me i mean the 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 most support are not just women um but they're women who have actually dealt with predator stalkers emotional uh abuse um shit like that because I mean, this is where the Me Too thing went off the rails. Like, it's if you're comparing Aziz to Harvey Weinstein, if you're comparing an affair to, you know, fucking grabbing a girl, like whatever, people take all of it less seriously, you know, because now there'll be some like sexual assault case and people are like, oh, what, like the Aziz thing was just like a bad date or whatever. And so it's kind of insulting for the women who actually have been through like abuse and crazy shit. I like that there Uh, are comedian ways to categorize like uh, abuse or molestation. Wasn't it Aziz? Was it a Louis CK? Was it a Cosby? Was it on the the Delita scale? Is it a one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, (laughs) yeah. Comedy. Jesus Christ. Um, but, and, and that's it that's the thing too is like the majority of people who are trying to get Chappelle canceled don't give a fuck about trans people the majority of people who you know will try to get a guy canceled it's like they're not doing this for women they want power yeah yeah and they want 
uh, their dopamine hit. Because, like, mm-hmm. I used to do that. I was miserable in my wow. relationship. I was failing with comedy. And so if I had a chance to fucking tweet at some celebrity for being a dickhead and, and write something funny and I saw people would retweet it and fucking celebrities would follow me and whatever, like, I would feel good about myself. And, you know, at the time, I thought what I was doing was righteous. I didn't have the introspection to be like, oh, I'm doing this for dopamine hits because I'm super fucking depressed. You know, it's that not That would be like, a great, like, reply tweet under under just anything that does really well. By the way, just guys, so I was guys really know. depressed. <laughs> That's okay. We all do that. I really enjoyed like a couple years ago. I went after Chrissy Teigen just because I fucking can't stand her and she sure. is evil and compromised. And sometimes it's fun to just point out the realities of someone's situation. You get a little high on it. You're just like you're suddenly you're battling with a fucking celebrity and you got a little army behind you and shit like that. And uh, the problem is I became super addicted to it. And then it became my like identity. Mm. And I think the thing and I've talked to And this was in addition to being a male feminist. So yikes. I know. I know. My days were packed. Um <laughs> we're just fucking, you were busy. I was a busy bee. Um <laughs> but I think the thing that I forgot about comedy, it was so easy for me to shit on comedy because I felt like I failed. Right. Like that's why I would shit on comedy, is I was like, they don't it comes down to they don't like me. Um And what's so crazy is, I mean, dude, I almost started like, I don't know Bobby Kelly that well. And I almost started sobbing on the phone with him because he's a dude that like, we've done comedy stuff together and podcasts and, and was just so there for me. And when I got canceled, what were you canceled from? Or was it just like a public shaming, a public? It was my life. It was in a day. I lost my wife, who was my best friend, all of our friends, because every one of our friends was like a journalist, progressive, whatever. So literally Ugh, zero, friends. Zero, yeah, zero of my friends now that I couldn't get them on fucking an MSNBC morning show. OK, zero, so they're not real friends. Z- well, right. But at the time that, that they were all I had. And right. so zero, zero of them called. To make sure, I mean, I'd already been pretty public about like suicide stuff and um, none of them even texted, even if they disagreed with me to be like, hey, man, I hope you survive. Like, I yeah, don't they should have checked to see if you were on a bridge somewhere. So, yeah. So they were all gone. Um, my all my money, obviously gone. My fans, all of them, like it was the wildest shit where I had someone on my Facebook because uh, all your days. friends were like leftists, though, it seems. Well, th- once they were given the orders, they just kind of they were like, we're gone now. And so and some of them are like trickling back now, which is like it's sweet. It's weird. <laughs> but like the craziest one was there was a dude on Facebook who because before it went public, um, I don't think I can talk. I don't think I can talk about like divorce stuff. But like I voluntarily instead I was like kicked off the show. I voluntarily was like, hey, dude, if you're getting, like, fucking crazy emails from people, I didn't think it was going to blow up. I already moved to L.A. My wife and I were always already separated. I had a girlfriend in L.A. And uh, I was like, why don't I just, like, produce the show and I'll just, like, do behind-the-scenes shit? And, like, I don't have to be on it. Like, I want to do stand-up anyway. That's why I'm in L.A. And um, so I stepped down from the show. And, you know, so people were writing really nice things on my Facebook. And somebody wrote... um, you know, something like, I just want you to know, like, I wouldn't be here without you. Like, you were talking about mental health. You saved my life. All this shit. Then I got canceled. Motherfucker doesn't even delete that post. You know how you can add a comment on Facebook? Mm-hmm. Adds yeah. to it. You're a fucking piece of shit. I hope you fucking die. Like, all this stuff. And, like, that was my life. What year Being was like, this? I don't know. Dude, I've blocked it all out. Um, I mean, it was probably like six or seven. It was a very long time ago that, that it should not be affecting me anymore. No, and, it's OK. Because uh, I'm just putting it into the, like the uh, context of of like oh. the, the cultural uh, kind of obsession with like cancel culture. Oh, I can I, help you, Chrissy. Not to uh, not to brag. I should put this on my resume. I was canceled before Louis C.K. I was okay. technically the first comedian. So pre-2010? Yeah, I, I guess. That's fair to say? OK. Sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe around then. OK. 2010, 2012, uh, yeah, 2012, I don't know. Um, but it, uh, 
yeah so it was so it was it was everybody and then i just disappeared because well uh, i'm sorry to interrupt but like what the fuck whose I business know. is it of everyone's if like somebody in the chat mentioned this and i agree what business is it of everybody's if you have an affair if your relationship falls apart was it because you had like prided yourself on being this male feminist i think so yeah okay. i think that's what i want well because that's what i was saying before where like it's nothing that comedians haven't talked about on stage this is right what like what com guy comics do this is what they get into yeah. comedy so but it's also the, the it, it's also the fact. Ooh, I can finally be on a show where I can say the liberal media. Uh, it's also the fact that like, if you Google it and don't read the article, and let alone a lot of the stuff in the article isn't true. But even if it was all true, it is just the stuff I told you. It's a fair a, a tweet and uh, this fucking road fuck story. Uh, so that's yeah. it, right? And again, most of it isn't even fucking true, but. If it is all true, it's that. But the problem is most people, if you're a club booker and I'm not, I don't have a Louis CK audience, right? I don't, I, I, I'm not that popular. And one person tweets a club and goes, Hey, you see this guy. And suddenly on the Google search, you see shit like sexual misconduct. Like when I see the word sexual misconduct, I think of like some fucking dude who like cornered a girl. Like I think of like an assailant, like that, 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 that's what strikes my brain. Um, or predatory behavior. I mean, I did a fucking, I did <laughs> Corinne, uh, Corinne Fisher, who I adore with all my heart, uh, brought me to open for her last year at Zany's and, you know, primarily female audience, um, female manager, uh, and she, <laughs> and Lucy, the, the booker of Zany's goes, um, she goes, uh, Hey, I just want you to know you treat my weight staff better than comics who have not been canceled. And I go, I know. Aww. Cause like fucking, and it sounds silly and I'll, I'll, but like that line actually makes me feel like a better human because you start to believe just like you can believe your own hype. You start to like, I walked around LA that week, even though I had a girlfriend next to me, I walked around like I was accused of rape. I walked around with a fucking hoodie. I walked around with fucking sunglasses, like, because there were big lefty comedians trying to score points just like old Jamie would have yep. tried to score points and like wow. they're burying me. So they're blowing up the story even more. Like it was fucking oh, yeah. wow. crazy. It was fucking crazy. And I, you know, there are times where I feel really, if it still affects me and I don't know if you feel this way, I mean, you have a good thing going there, but like for me, I, didn't really have support until again, I started reaching out to comics again. Like the person who like Stanhope was the one who was like, dude, let's get you back out there. And then wow. Doug brought me on his show for the first all things comedy festival and Bert and Morgan were on the show. And then Rogan called that week and he's like, let's get you back on the show. And I was like, fuck man, I shit on comics so much. And the thing with comedy is like, I think where comics have the advantage in cancel culture is and where I fucked up was I stopped being a comic. Mm -hmm. uh, but is that they are open about their mistakes and their flaws because that's what we talk about. And, you know, they can be open to, you know, I'm a liberal, but I disagree with this. I disagree with cancel culture or I'm a conservative, but I'm socially, of course, I'm fine with what gay people do or whatever the fuck it is. And like comics can be nuanced and comics can see both sides and comics can be forgiving. I, I heard Roy Wood Jr. say uh, you can't be a liberal and be pro cancel culture and pro prison reform. Like, Ooh. right. Like those mm -hmm. are both one of the reasons I became my battery's going to die. So I'm going to take a walk. One of the reasons that I became a liberal is, yeah prison reform and this idea of forgiveness and like helping people who were like down and cancel culture is essentially a worse version of that because there's not even prison sentences like is a, that no a gonzo tattoo on your arm it is it's a gonzo <laughs> it's a gonzo G that you tattoo. should be canceled for no. <laughs> um, it's adorable you shut your mouth um so the even for prison there's a there's a sentence if louis ck was sentenced Right. You know, he's done two years or whatever the fuck it is. And then he get gets out of it. He gets mm -hmm. to go on and, and work. But it's like there will be people protesting every show he does for the rest of his life. And again, luckily, he has an audience and he has a lot of talent and, you know, can kind of keep going. But this idea that like when people are still trying to cancel me and I don't want to sound victim me because I'm not. But there is this point where I'm like, oh, you just want you literally just are going to do this until I kill myself because wow. you never want me to work again. And it's been 10 here's, years. Yeah, here's the thing is like when you work in a in a 
in a high exposure media environment. So that's any entertainer, journalism, anybody like, you know, anybody in the realm of, of a public figure or a media environment. It's like you you put yourself out there so much and your peers and your haters, it, it's high, it's highly likely that they will also be like highly uh, media verse or whatever, or um, yeah. Yes. So if they hate you and they know exactly what to say, it's kind of, easy to to bury somebody to ruin somebody's career to put out a hit piece because totally. you know exactly what to say to bury a guy you know exactly what to say to bury a girl and like you and i are good examples of both yeah. and you know if you're if you're decently connected if you right can get something out to jezebel or the fucking daily beast or whatever and it's like you don't even need to be true it doesn't even need to yeah. be factually correct and you can you have that media literacy where you could bury somebody and well, do you feel like it's up. still like, I feel like you have such good, like it's not good for your psyche or mental health, but I feel like because you've surrounded yourself with people who don't give a fuck, who have your back, you know, I remember the, when I did Aaron's podcast it, and I haven't seen him in so long, you know, we Bird. met at a club. We did a, yeah, we did a show oh, together yeah. in Toronto forever ago. And the fact that like, you know, like he made fun of me during my woke days, but like we had this like real connection from way back in the day. And when he had me on his podcast and I just felt like, oh, that's right. Like comics have each other's backs. And like, I just, I don't know it. What I was going to say is because you're surrounded with those people or compound, you know, like aunt was fucking canceled or whatever. Do you, so, and just being a comic in general, do you feel a little more invincible? Like people mm. can come at me, but also like it doesn't matter because I have fucking backup or does it still sort of terrorize you? That's actually, I love that you're asking that because that's like, that's a two part question. So I feel like the relationship I built with Compound Media and the, and the comedians there, it wasn't just that they had my back, like for the instance with like Kate Willett. And I've told the story before, but she's this very lefty, liberally woke comic, like, you know, friends with that whole, you know, a Netflix darling had a 15 minute special Comedy Central, like in that whole world. Sure. She didn't like an impression I did of her on In Hot Water. Um, and it like circulated and people didn't really see the impression. They just took like screenshots and like just said Sounds the worst. Right. It, yeah. It's a perfect example of somebody who took um, like kind of the Me Too movement and took full advantage of it. Like she she thought that I had made compound media fans go after her and i'm like look no they just love us and you suck so that's right, just right. what they're i don't i'm not like sent i'm not like ringing a bell um but like yeah, i could i mean that whole story would take like 10 minutes but sure. um but i feel like once i kind of joined up with compound media and i realized that these are all really funny people and how important like free speech is that like i would put myself out there like my name whatever to back up compound media and the other like i kind of had their back first and had compound media's back first and oh, had cool. kumi's back like i i went out of my way to like in articles or interviews or whatever to like talk about compound media and i feel like so when the kate willett shit happened Obviously, they're all Gino, Aaron, they're all there, too. Like, we're all going through it together. Um, that was a moment of, like, fusion. Like, all right, we're 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 definitely, we yeah. see the reality of this insane situation. And I think she was coming after me a bit harder than she was Aaron Berg because he was a little bit better connected and he's a, and he's a guy. So it's, it is interesting to know. How very, like, how very sexist of them. <laughs> right? Uh, so I felt like, yeah, the relationship with the compound media comics it, and it wasn't like, oh, this is I was cast away by the left. It's like, no, I had this like kind of awakening um, and I kind of split apart my own reality through talking to, you know, like Larry Sharp, who's a libertarian and just and it was like these little cancellations all along. And you realize, OK, the friends who kind of slough off the second some shit goes down it's like oh these were not your real friends again these were people who were hanging on to get, to get a spot at stonewall in or to get it you know what i mean like they're the in it for superficial reasons people are fucking cowards and instead of yeah. being bitter because yo i've like briefly talked to like people who have been canceled or people who you know are sick of the like who like get bitter and i don't want to be that like i can't i no. can't be i can't be that person when yeah. someone comes up to me and they're like yeah fuck women right i'm like all right buddy like like what happened to me like it wasn't fun but like i, I just I, need somebody to do that with yeah. yeah yeah like i just don't want i don't want to live in that world um 
Oh, wait. So it's, to answer the other part of your question. So there's oh, like yeah. the compound media relationship. I feel like I fight for them and they fight for me. And now we're kind of like, uh, like buds in, in the sure. sort of in the, uh, this fight or whatever. And, and this fight for like, no, it's funny above all else. Like once you put something before funny, whether it's being politically correct, whether it's like not pissing off the trans community, anything, if you put anything before yeah. being funny, you're, you're, you're compromised. You know, yeah, you're like, no one made me laugh like aunt when I was growing up. Yeah. No. Um, so the, the relationship is sort of like we met each other halfway or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the not giving a fuck thing just came with time, like and never apologizing. And you realize like, oh, the haters, they kind of move along faster if you don't apologize because they want to mm -hmm. find a weaker target. Because, again, it's not about whether I apologize, whether I'm genuinely sorry. Uh, it's like they just want to know that their impact has made it so someone can't create again. They want to oh, just take tear somebody people, out. Yeah, they'll tear people apart more when they apologize. When Louis apologized, that made it almost worse. Yeah. You so know, I, I you can't oh, sorry, do that. Sorry. No, I mean, I disappeared only because I tried to kill myself. And where oh, I was like, right. I can't handle a backlash. And at the time, my girlfriend wasn't home when it happened. And I was like, well, she's going to leave me. And so I have nothing. I have no money. I have no job. I have, you know, whatever. And so when she supported me, because she, you know, knew who I was, I was like, okay, I'll be fine with this. And I'm just going to disappear from like the public. And so I started teaching jujitsu and shit like that in LA. Um, but I never made like a statement or anything like that or, yeah, I you didn't know, either. and I th fuck them. Like they don't deserve it. 